Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. We're back for another unboxing or unwrapping or unripping or whatever you want to call it. Um, but inshallah, today we're going to have a fun day because we have two surprise books wrapped in really nice paper in a really nice way. Uh, two brothers, mashallah, may Allah reward them, came from the Bay Area and they brought these uh, for me. And I'm too excited. It's late night here, but I'm going to unwrap them and take a look at what we have. So, bismillah. I'm not going to delay anymore. Right, they did a really good job wrapping, and I feel really bad, but got to get to the books. <laughs> All right, bismillah. I don't want to hurt the books. All right. There's two sets. This is the first of them. These are surprise works. So, ah, subhanAllah, this is Mu'allam as sunnati and nabawiyya and this is the Khulasa, this is a, a book that has been summarized from 14 kitaban وهي أصول الكتب السنة I know about this book, subhanAllah I didn't have it a Sheikh Saleh Hashami, and this is printed in Damashq in Syria uh, Darul Qalam's print what he did, and he's a, uh, mashallah, uh, many people have not heard of him but those of us who uh, spend a lot of time looking at beneficial new works in hadith uh, not new like he's coming up with new hadith, but taking the books of hadith and reorganizing and benefiting from them. Have heard of him, Sheikh Saleh Shami. Uh, and I had read one of his works earlier where he had put together the hadith from Bukhari and Muslim, leaving out everything that's repetitive. So only a hadith that are in Bukhari that are not in Muslim, and there are Muslim that are not in Bukhari, and those that would be uh, in both in one order. So it's a very beautiful work. But this work, I had heard about this and what he did, and this is like a, subhanAllah, a lifetime of effort where he took 14 major hadith books. Like, so you have the Kutub al Sitta and you have other books of Zawahid and uh, others that he put together. And then he summarized the hadith together to take the most beneficial per chapter and he put them together in a three volume work, I believe. And again, I'm just opening this and I'm going off the top of my head from but I had read about this a few years ago that I think was more than a hundred thousand ahadith that he had looked at across 14 major works not like 14 one volume but like some of those books are seven eight volumes and so on and he had put this together trying to leave out things that are repetitive a hadith where one of them was clearer and stronger than he would use that one and so on so alhamdulillah he has put this together in a three volume work Mu'allim as sunnah al nabawiyya uh, mashallah uh, looks beneficial let's uh, take a look at uh, the inside so mashallah uh, very good print it's got the cream paper mm. so this looks like this is the second volume this is the third volume. Let's look at the first volume. Uh, I always like to look at the introduction. So okay, mashallah. So this is uh, the introduction by the author himself. Uh, and he writes which books he used to put this together. So what he did, the Muatta Imam Malik, the Muslim Imam Ahmad, I mean those two were amazing works by themselves. A Jamia Sahih, which is a famous book of Imam al-Bukhari. A Jamia Sahih Imam Muslim. The Sunan of Abi Dawood, the Jami'ah of Al-Tirmidhi, the Sunan of Al-Nasai, the Sunan of al Maja, Sunan of Darami, Sunan Al-Kabir of Al-Bayhaqi, uh, the Sahih of Ibn Khuzayma, the Sahih of Ibn Hibban, the Mustadrak of uh, Ala Sahiyain of Imam Al-Hakim, a Hadith Al-Mukhtara of uh, Al-Maqdasi, which uh, Al-Hanbali, one of the great, great, really amazing works of Hadith as well. These are the 14, and then other than them, he use some of his own works where he had the Jamia Bayna Sahiyain that I was telling you about earlier and other works of his own and he from those he collected these ahadith and put them in a beautiful order so what does he begin with um, this is the second print which is always good because usually they find mistakes in the first print and fix it um, Bab Arkan al-Islam wal iman so he begins with Aqeedah about Arkan of Islam and uh, subhanallah then he goes uh, and this is the the first bab is all on aqidah which is really beautiful it's on your uh, belief and then uh, 
Iman in the in the Day of Judgment and goes on uh, Kitab uh, Iman in Qadr uh, the book of Kitab al-Ilm, the book of knowledge and it's all a hadith, beautifully well organized uh, beautiful print as you can see inshallah um, very very clear, very evident um, good uh, referencing obviously because he gives you the reference where the hadith is and the way he references here he will have just a letter like a dal which will be for Abu Dawood uh, and then he will put the hadith number or for example a uh, ba which will be for Bukhari or ta for Tirmidhi so that way you can uh, or there's a ta that's going to be for the Muatta you can look it up in the actual book of hadith now what I like also is he has given a very short slight grading right so here he has munkati' which is a form of weakness but he, he points it out to you. Here he has Hassan. He has Hassan Sahih. Sahih. So very light grading, but it does give you the grading of the hadith. Uh, here has Isnaduhu Hassan, meaning that we can look at the, the matan and issues like that. Beautiful, well organized. I think this would be a beautiful work to teach for those that are teaching a hadith to explain um, a jami'ah concept a, a comprehensive concept where they want to go over aqidah and iman and fiqh and salah and so on in a comprehensive manner this would be a beautiful work al-mu'allim as-sunnah al-nabawiyya huwa khulasa and this is a summarized from 14 kitab and we have usul al-kutub as-sunnah um beautiful work but we have one more to go so let's not stop yet Bismillah. What did I do with my knife? Ah. Man, I'm so excited. We already got so many fun things. We got one more. Allahu Akbar. Ah, mashallah. Looks nice. You always tell from good binding, inshallah. All right, what do we have here? MashaAllah. Tahdeeb al Sunan Abi Dawood wa Idah al Illati wal Mushkilatihi. MashaAllah. This is a beautiful, beautiful, well known book. So, before I get into this book itself, um, <coughs> one of the best books from the Kutub al Sitta, from the well-known six books. People say Sahih al-Sitta, but this is incorrect. They're not all Sahih. Bukhari and Muslim are Sahihain, the two Sahih. Then there are the other four, one of them being Jami'a Tirmidhi, not Sunan Tirmidhi, but Jami'a Tirmidhi. Then there is Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan An-Nisai, Sunan Ibn Majah. These six are well known as the six famous books. And you can organize them by the seven, including the Muslim Imam Ahmad or the five, excluding the two Sahih or the four or the three or so on. But the famous six, okay. From them, each one has its own standing, its own value, its own uh, unique characteristics. The Jami' al Musnad, the Sahih of Imam al Bukhari, famous, wonderful. From the, the impeccable chain of narrators, and the, uh, the great um, high standard of Imam al-Bukhari to accept a hadith to be in his Sahih, that is the best, right? Then you have the, the Sahih uh, of Imam Muslim, which has its own beautiful organization and its own beautiful fawaid and benefits. Jami' al-Tirmidhi has Imam al-Tirmidhi's notes and he gives uh, opposing views and he gives uh, the rulings from the different fiqh ulama like uh, Jamhur took this opinion or Sahaba took this opinion. Wonderful work. And Nisa ibn Majah has his own. But the best of them as our Shaykh Samiullah, uh, not Shaykh Aminullah but Shaykh Samiullah who used to teach the Sunan of Ibn Dawood, used to say that this is the best organized to teach fiqh. Sunan Abi Dawood, the famous collection by Abu Dawood. The most famous explanation that everybody uses is called Aun al Ma'bud, Bisharh, Sunan Abi Dawood of Azim Abadi. Amazing work. I think it's like maybe 14 some odd volumes, but usually it's printed like in a seven volume set, like Darussalam has, and so on. 
Aun al Ma'bud is a complete sharh, explanation, wonderful. But there are a lot of beneficial older shuruh like this one. And this is Tahdeeb Sunan Abi Dawood. How did this work get to be? And this is something I've benefited from. Um, when I was doing my masters, I used to benefit from this book, but it was not this print. Uh, there was one by Ahmed Shakir. I believe it was in six volumes that was printed like back in the 50s. So the paper and the writing was not very clear, but he had put together this. Um, and uh, this is when I had learned about this book. Um, Al-Mundari, Imam Al-Mundari, the famous Al-Mundari, wrote so many beneficial works. He saw the benefits from Sunan Abi Dawood and he summarized it and he made a tahdeeb, he made a summary of Sunan Abi Dawood and he added his own notes, his own kind of beneficial points, not a full-on sharah explanation, but some beneficial points. And Al-Mundari is, and he has the Lejma'a and also so many beautiful, amazing works, great scholar. So it was a very beneficial work. He took Sunan Nabi Dawood, summarized it. He didn't take the whole thing, explained it, summarized it, and then added his own notes. One of the greatest scholars of Islam ever, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim. Imam Ibn Qayyim al jawziya was one of the greatest scholars of Islam ever, the student of Ibn Taymiyyah, the, the, the author of Dawa Dawa. He wrote Zad al-Ma'ad. I mean, if you go to our bookshelf or our library, uh, almost on every shelf, in every... Uh, different ulum, you'll find benefits from uh, Ibn al-Qayyim. Um, he wrote Manaru uh, uh, Madaraj al-Salakin. I mean, so many, so many books that we can benefit from Ibn al-Qayyim. <coughs> he saw the benefit of Sunan Abi Dawood and the benefits of what Al-Mundari did, and he further refined it. He further summarized it and added further notes to it, so it became a really beneficial work. So now, you may ask yourself, a great scholar like Ibn al-Qayyim and then Ibn Imam al-Munadhari uh, from Sunan Abi Dawood. Why is this not more famous? Because we do not have the complete book. Uh, you know, over time, manuscripts would, you know, pages or parts would get lost and so on. So we do not have the complete work. But what the ulema like Ahmed Shakir and others had done is they had looked at the manuscripts of al-Mundari's work and then Ibn al-Qayyim's work and kind of put it together and pieced it together to be a pretty complete picture of would be would be the original complete work. Uh, so it is definitely a very beneficial work. Why uh, did I really love it? Because it was not just an explanation that just explained the words and things, but Ibn al-Qayyim and al-Mundari being very strong scholars in hadith and so on, would also talk about the grading of the hadith in some detail and about the narrators of hadith. So when I was doing my masters and I was looking at the uh, a different uh, hadith from different chains, I found this to be a very beneficial work. I did not have it till today, alhamdulillah. May Allah reward our brother uh, Abdul Rabb for bringing it. So, a tahdeeb Sunan Abi Dawood uh, of Ibn al-Qayyim. May Allah uh, have mercy on the great scholar Ibn al-Qayyim for the great works that he has left for us. That till today, like an nuniya what an amazing work he wrote. I mean, if you get a chance to study it, study it with a good scholar, you will love it. Uh, this has a tahqiq of uh, Sheikh Nabil a Sindhi, mashallah, well-known muhaqqiq and uh, well-known scholar. Uh, mashallah, this is through the uh, organization that's being benefited from, Sheikh, from Bakr, uh, Sheikh Bakr uh, ibn uh, Abdullah Abu Zaid. Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid, well-known, uh, mashallah, printed by Dar uh, ibn Hazm, who definitely has some excellent prints. So let's take a look inside. Um, this also is three volumes like our earlier work. Um, Tayyib, I'm going to try to show you uh, at least the first page first. You can see it is uh, well printed. It's in the beautiful cream colored paper, very clear writing, um, strong binding. You know, these things come in handy. Uh, and Sheikh Nabil uh, Ibn Nasir uh, Nassar, uh, uh, a Sindhi, uh, well known, mashallah, for good tahqiq work. So, if we look in the beginning, he gives his notes about manuscripts and how he researched it and things, which is very beneficial. And Alhamdulillah, we see, let's take a look at, let's look at the second volume. Um, MashaAllah, what I love, all this research. So yes, you have the hadith from the Sunan Abi Dawood and you have the, uh, SubhanAllah, so, you have the notes from Al-Mundari and Ibn Al-Qayyim and you also have the research of Sheikh Nabil uh, underneath. So 
when you talk about the authenticity of the hadith, for example, here it says, Qala Ahmad, yani Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he said this. Tayyib. Now, in the tahqiq, it will tell you where is this documented. Yani, uh, anhu fi al Mughni. Yani, Ibn Qudama al Maqdasi has put this in al Mughni. And ikhtalafun, yani, there is khilaf of alama fi al hadith, on the hadith of Abu Tha'laba. So, when there is a discussion on the authenticity and weakness of the hadith, MashaAllah, the Shaykh here uh, not only brings all of the great discussion from Al Mundari and Ibn Al Qayyim, and he will say here, يعني, قال al Mundari, and then he will say here, قال Ibn Al Qayyim, so that you know where whose uh, notes you're reading, and then I'll give you, okay, where is this hadith originally from in the Sunnah Abi Dawood, hadith number, for example, here it's hadith number 2920. And then he'll say, Min Tariq uh, Ibn Ishaq, he'll give you the Sanad that has come. And if there's any criticism or authenticity about the narrators, he will go over that. Beautiful work. Sunan Abi Dawood, amazing work. I highly suggest it. So if you, if you can get it, get Sunan Abi Dawood. If you're just going to buy one explanation because you don't want to get anything else, get Uran Al Ma'bud of Al Azim Abadi. It's Jamia, it's complete. But if you're going to يعني, be able to get more, then Al Khatib Al Baghdadi's Mu'allim Al Sunan is an excellent work as well. And Al Tahdib of uh, Al Mundari and the final complete work of Ibn Al Qayyim is a must have. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us from these books and make them a means of us to getting to know our Rabb, our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our Nabi alayhi salatu salam, and our Deen, its Ahkam, its rulings. Uh, so that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him in the correct way so we can be from those that enter Jannah and live in it forever and ever seeing our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jazakumullahu khairan